Hi, this is Caroline uh, for African Television International. Uh, I'm here at the uh, building of uh, International Aka Film Academy. Uh, it's very great because there is a lot happening here. So we'll just be going around showing you some of the students and some of the teachers and the founders of this uh, uh, insp inspiring film academy. So we'll get to know them and interview some of them. Ted Bryant from African Television. We're here at the International Academy of Film and Television with Indy Knopf. Um, Indy, first of all, tell us a little bit about your role with the school. I work in administration here in the school, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of the liaison between the school here as an international school and Belgium because I'm a native Belgian as well. So, in that sense, I'm just helping set up the school and do basic administration. This is our first uh, school in Europe that we're opening. Mm -hmm. We originally started in Asia right. uh, 10 years ago. And it was a very successful model there, so it quickly grew out to America, and we have most of our campuses are in Asia and America. And um, this is our first one in Europe, so yeah. How do we settle on Antwerp in the end? Um, our director uh, has a strong affinity to Antwerp. Um, also, it's a beautiful city. There's many opportunities here for getting different flavors for filmmakers. Um, also, its location, geographic location, it's like centralized, really right. in the heart of, um, of Europe. And also, there are no other English film schools around here, so that was also a big, big point. So the that. faculty is, you know, because we're an acting and a filmmaking yeah. school, and we do we give all-rounded courses. Um, it's very mixed because the students need to be kind of trained in all the different facets of right. filmmaking. So we, all the mentors that we have are active industry professionals. They don't. It's not like a university where they're bound to the university for many years. Mm -hmm. It's we, so we have a very flexible schedule, which means we can be flexible with our mentors and with their schedules right. as well, you know, within their role, whatever sector of industry they are. Um, but our faculty ourselves, I mean, you know, the administration is global. We are in contact with all the other people in Hong Kong and in America. We work together to try, you know, make the company go forward on a right. global level. So. And that flexible schedule that you mentioned is interesting. I know the, the program you said itself, the major one, is 10 months. Yes, that and is you have the multiple longest. start dates throughout the year. Yes, there are four starting dates uh, every year, and they're in sync in, in all the schools. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, it, it, it adds flexibility to the traditional starting date around the September period. Um, so yeah, no, the, the starting date is definitely gives us edge because we can enroll people all year long for this 10 month program, um, our diploma, our certificate, which is five months. Um, and yeah, it's also good for our mentors as well, you know, so they can also fit into the flexible, flexible schedule. And um, ultimately, what's going to happen is with those four consecutive starting dates, um, for example, the diploma program is for us broken into four terms. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what will happen is a student will be able to go between the campuses to do the different terms to do the same education but just in different locations to nice. have more flavors as a filmmaker and have like a cultural exchange and you know broaden your horizons as an actor or a filmmaker. Our specialty is ultimately our filmmaking diploma which is 10 months where you know I mean most people who come to our school are aspiring you know filmmakers and, and directors and you know if you want to be a director it's all about delegating making mm -hmm. to be able to stand in other people's shoes so for example, you know, we have acting programs and we have uh, filmmaking programs, so there's quite a lot of synergy between those two, so the actors and the filmmakers can mingle, yeah. which is good. And I mean, you know, the, the training is all-rounded, so in the sense they do all the technical stuff, they do all the lighting, the sound, the production, the camera work, and then they do all of the other facets behind filmmaking, like, you know, pitching, producing, convergent media, crowdfunding. Um, marketing, of course, and then they do all the more traditional roles like directing, you know, cinematography, right. and just literally an all-rounded course of filmmaking, and for acting as well. And the acting courses are more um, accommodating t towards television because a lot of acting courses in Europe are set up to be um, more focused on the theatrical world, more in theater, and then it goes into television. Whereas us, we start directly with television in that sense. Interesting. So then just kind of wrapping up, um, what are your goals then, like immediately for the school? What would you like to see it become? And, and sort of like enrollment rates or, or uh, uh, you know, increased exposure? Mm -hmm. um, what are your goals? What are our goals? Well, this is our um, first campus in Europe, so we would like to, you know, we're here to stay, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, 
This is our first campus in Europe, and yeah, we, we want to, you know, create a firm position here, a strong position, and stay. Um, you know, there's no other film schools at the moment here, English film schools or anything, so that's kind of what our goal is. And also to create this global network between all of our campuses so there can be this synergy between, you know, all the different continents that we're located on. Right. And that is definitely ultimately what the goal is, to have like a globalized film education where people can really like travel in different currents between all the different campuses that we have. Yeah. Um, the International Academy of Film and Television started in Cebu in 2004, so this is their 10-year birthday. Uh, in that time, uh, the school was established there, thinking of, along the idea of bringing Hollywood to the Philippines. And they did that. And it, when you choose to enroll with us, uh, I can assure you that you will never be covered um, on purpose um, <laughs> in, in mud or beer or any other Eight. fluid. Well, unless you like it. And it, if you like it, yes. Yeah. yeah but, but Within reason. Exactly. Exactly. Now, um, the program here is in two pieces, two parts that run alongside each other. There's the filmmaking piece for people who want to be on that side of the camera, and the acting piece for people who want to be on this side of the camera. And there's, in within those programs, there's the very large 10 month long diploma programs, and then there's a shorter version of that that is the certificate program. When you start, we have rolling enrollments throughout the year. So the next one is in February, after that April, then June, August, and September. So you can enroll at many points throughout the year. When you start, the certificate and diploma people are in the same classes. They're all moving along together for the first five months. And then the certificate people graduate, and the diploma people continue on to do more projects and, and to complete a diploma degree. When you get that diploma degree from our school, it is from our school. It is not an academic diploma. Here in Belgium, it might be more considered something like an uplighting or a professional training. And, but the key to our education and our philosophy is what you do get as an actor or a filmmaker is a showreel, is a, a document that is a visual document. It's a documentation of the work that you did while you were here. And it is that sort of thing that as you go and look for work, um, if that's what you choose to do, or if you choose to take this to go on and continue your education, it is like a resume. It's a visual resume of the work that you did while you were here. And it is the philosophy of the school that you learn by doing. So there is little theory. Theory comes through in the teaching, but it is not the focus of our classes here at the academy. At the academy, the idea is as an actor, you will be acting. As a filmmaker, you will be making film. And beyond that, for each, for both of those programs, as an actor, you're also learning what it means to be a director, what it means to be directed. Um, as a filmmaker, you're learning what it is to use the camera and how to work the lights and how do I develop a script. It may not be the thing that you ultimately end up doing in your full career or whatever path you take from the academy, 
But what it does do is it gives you a beautiful overview of how the teamwork of filmmaking works. Because for some of you that have made films um, already, you know it is teamwork. Because in order to be directed, or you kind of have to know what it is to be directed and what it is to direct. In order to light something, you need to know the limitations of what that light is. And, and, or for sound, if you, if you try and mic this room, it's a very different experience with all of you in here than it is when it's only one person. So you learn the dynamics of many of the different fields and pieces of filmmaking and acting. You learn as an actor, we were talking about it earlier, how you move your body and how you have to move your body differently on film than you do on stage. Because it's a very different sort of, it's a, it's, again, that's the dynamic. When you're working as an actor, the tools you're using are you. But you need to know, when someone tells me to stand in the light for a film, you need to know how important that is. Because three other people down the line have figured out how to light that scene. And if they're asking you to stand in that spot and you feel more comfortable standing over here, or if you forget, it's going to mess up the shot. Right. So you need to know where to be and, and what is important all the way down the line. So that's part of the philosophy of the school, is the learning by doing piece of it. In addition to the certificate and diploma programs, there are shorter programs as well. Some for on-camera acting exclusively, They're, it's about a month long. And also one for independent filmmaking, also about a month long. Those two programs can be a combination and we try and switch it off throughout the year of either night classes, several in a month, or weekend classes, fewer but longer so that you can complete in a month a program that is a short. Sometimes some people feel like that is an intro to on-camera acting, for instance, if you've never done any before, a way to taste it. Or for others, if they have done on-camera acting, it's a refresher. So it, it can be both ways, for instance, with those workshops. And then finally, and this is what we did in the fall, and we hope to do more of it um, in this year, is we will continue with individual workshops throughout the year with a focus on, for instance, how to audition for the actors or um, a very specific thing about how do you manage crowdfunding for um, a piece that you're producing? How do you raise money? So those are things that will happen throughout the year. Currently, we are building our schedule here in Antwerp. It's a little bit of um, an, an interesting dynamic. I use that word too often. Uh, it's a little bit tricky because what we're trying to do is um, fit mentors um, from this community into the <coughs> programs that we have developed and we're trying to find the right people for those positions. Um, and also make it work in our school here. As you can see, we have uh, a couple of classrooms over there. What you can't see, and it isn't done yet, is directly above us will be um, an acting studio to the front, which will be, that's largely an empty room, uh, honestly. But it needs to have some pieces in it that help you to make it smaller spaces when you need a more intimate space or pads or things to roll around on if you're doing body work. So it, it, but it is essentially will remain a shell so that you can make of it what you want. And lucky this was a clothing store before we moved in. So there's already lots of mirrors up there, which is great. So you can see what you're doing as you're doing it. In the middle will be the editing suite. Uh, we have uh, Alienware computers. For our editing programs, we'll be running Final Cut Pro and Avid, among other editing programs. They take up a lot of energy in the computer. They take up a lot of space. So these are computers that are specifically designed uh, for being fast and responsive when you're running a heavy program. Um, in addition, here will be our library with print materials for loan. And in the back is our equipment room. Um, there we will have a series of cameras uh, that run from basic Panasonic startup models to, to more complicated cameras so as you go along in the course, the, it changes with you. 
you, you learn with the cameras and hopefully you improve with the cameras. The first project that you make is with a light camera and it's a light project. It's, it's, it's mostly visual. There's no book dialogue in it. Until the end, the last project that you do is your own thesis film as a filmmaker with um, light, sound, everything else. And the same is true for the actors. The projects that you do along the way get increasingly more difficult as you move along because some of it is, how can we say this? Sometimes you need to fail. Um, there's PowerPoint, it's been running over my head for a little while. Um, it, it basically says a lot of what I just said, hopefully. Maybe even better than what I just said. But um, I know some of you have questions. For a lot of us, it's about time and money when it comes to something like this. The time commitment to these courses is a lot. It is intense. It is full time. It is from 10 in the morning until 10 at night. At least if it is true of other campuses, it will be that way here as well. That we expect a lot from you for any of our programs. It's, it's, it is intense. It's not easy. Um, and the money part of it, uh, the tuitions vary for the different programs. I won't try and rattle off all those numbers now, but uh, they're over my head and I can share them with you individually if you want. We do have a scholarship opportunity here at the school for people. It is based on your, mostly your motivation, your desire, your need to be here, as well as your um, average family income, uh, or if you're an individual, your individual income. So both of those things are taken into consideration. And for the February and April intakes, we can offer scholarship. Um, I know that that's a word that doesn't always fly here in Belgium, people don't understand it, but basically it's a discount um, on your tuition amount based on what your earnings are. It reminds me of my days at film school. I went to film school in the beginning of the 90s. I went to St. Luke in Brussels. And uh, what, you get, what you get there and still do there is that they, in, at the first year, they divide you in different classes. And in the classes you have workshops. And you do all sorts of things. So we, may, we worked in a documentary. We did a fiction thing. We wrote a script. Uh, and we worked in a studio which was then a, an old church that was rebuilt as a studio and everybody did, did everything. So you did sound, you did makeup, you did, um, you, you built the, the sets together, you, you, you uh, looked for costumes and in the end you, you, you wrote the script, you did the editing. Way back then it was still on, um, on the old cassettes. So it was a linear way of editing. Uh, and now it's, it's a non-linear way of editing, you can assemble whatever way you want. Um, and after, I did that for two years and I came to the uh, conclusion that I didn't want to be a director. It was not my main purpose. I wanted to be a writer and I wanted to produce. But I didn't realize that in Belgium doing production is mainly uh, uh, a thing of um, ma and managing budget budgets and doing the administration on a production, 
and that was not the way I looked at it because I looked at how it was done in, in England and in America. So uh, combined with my ambition to write, I started off working and I worked as a script supervisor, a production coordinator, a second AD. I wrote for a couple of soap operas in Belgium, I wrote uh, a television uh, a police series, uh, I uh, got subsidies for a feature film and <coughs> after all and after all these things a couple of years ago I it all came together and I started really working as the producer that I wanted to be. I also did non-fiction stuff, so which uh, gave me the possibility to work with small crews. I did hidden camera, quiz shows, um, uh, uh, things that you were on the road for weeks in a row. And um, all these things combined gave me the opportunity to come to the point where I am now. I'm working as a production developer and a producer on international movies. And in, in this, this production, I can actually assemble all the uh, experience that I built up all these years. Which means I worked on sets. So when I read a script, I know how difficult certain scenes are. I, I know how, how much time they take to, to, uh, to make. I know how much people you need to make them. Uh, so I can reflect that in a budget. So the first thing I do when I get a script is I read it and I break it down in a scheduling um, a program called Movie Magic Scheduling. And then after that you take all the information that you get out of that and you put it into a budget. And then in the budget you have to break it down up until the, the copies that you have to uh, make of the call sheets every day and up to the miles that everybody in the crew does every day and up to the sandwiches that the extras are eating and up to the, um, the, the, the length of the, the rails that the grips are using and the amount of lights that we will need on night shoots and how they are going to get hang, hung up with, uh, with a condor and stuff like that. Hi, I'm Ted Bryant for AFTV. We're here at the International Academy, Academy for Film and Television. We're here with Wynn Pryor. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, a little bit is not much, of course, but sure. um, I can tell you I'm a bit of a producer in film. I've been working in art industry and fashion for the last eight years, and you know that's a, that's a very nice thing to do, I guess. Yeah. Well, do you have an association with the school tonight? Is that what brought you here? Well, um, a few months ago I was here to teach a class, which was really interesting, and we taught a lot about style and fashion in general, how to create style within film. And I think there's a big market and need for like good symbolism and fashion within film, so yeah, it's fun. It's sure. good. Yeah. So do you see yourself playing a role then with the school moving forward? Maybe. Uh, I've been talking to my friend's secretary a lot, and we've been discussing possibilities, so We'll see. It, it really depends on, on the school is going to be based in Antwerp or can, going back to Hong Kong or Beijing. I don't know what's going to happen. So I guess, I hope so. It will be fun. Yeah. Um, is there anything you're working on right now that you want to share with us maybe? Or uh, something that you enjoy doing? For, like Sure, sure. I have many projects low, uh, going. And one of them is Man of Steel, which I'm doing with uh, stylists for L magazines. and. We have a lot of um, professional models in that one. I don't usually use actors because I come from fashion background, but uh, that's going to be amazing because we already have like a sponsorship from Levi's uh, Paint, where we can uh, actually paint pieces of our sets completely in, in metal silver. So it's 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 going to be 
It's going to be quite big, I guess. Yeah, so it's going to be beautiful. Very yeah. nice. So then, I guess, just kind of lastly, do you see um, the school, you know, being brand new and starting up here in Antwerp? Do you see that creating more of a film culture here in the area, or? or I kind of guess that's editing? that's one of the biggest necessities around here. Yeah, Antwerp has always been based on on fashion, as 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 far as I know, and it's kind of lacking the creative vibe that that comes from working together and. Um, Film is a perfect basis to, to work together because you need to have form a team and become one whole on the concept and it could definitely use a school like this, yes, it would be beautiful. Sure. All right. Well we appreciate your time. Thank you for talking Thank to you. us. Kevin Brief. Thank you. Thank you. All right, for AFTV I'm Ted Bryant. Thanks for watching.